hi everyone welcome 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 again here with nathan thomas well let's wait a little bit to fill uh, a little bit of the room some people for first let us know where you're coming from uh here in the chat there's some uh it's an area that you can chat and just let us know where you coming from how are you nathan i'm doing great how are you we're just fine can't wait to to see this uh, part two webinar with you, animation in real time. Awesome, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Can't yeah. wait to follow up. There's the first guy, I think it was, what was his name? Um, from Vancouver, BC. Hey, um, yeah, Miguel, welcome, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Well, well let's wait a little bit uh, to see how's everything uh, over there. Nathan, how's everything going over there? Good, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, just outside Vancouver by like 20 minutes, but uh, yeah, things are going well. It's looking like it's going to rain here pretty quick, as it does in Vancouver, you know? <laughs> well, I guess we missed some of the rain for yeah. that yeah, fall, we'll rain. you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nicholas has a question. Where will this recording be available to watch? Well, Normally we have our webinar uh, after the webinars uh, are, are recorded. We upload it on YouTube and our channel, the Wacom channel, and as well we we'll share with you Nathan, so you can share with your uh, community uh, as well. Cool. So you can always visit us on the Wacom YouTube page or Facebook or Instagram, where we normally post all this content. So thank you for asking and and for attending to this webinar. Awesome. Yeah. Just a little bit more until the room gets a little bit peel, and so we can start. Sure. Um, what else can we say? This image that you guys see right now, this is from a short film that I'm working on. It's called Magic and Machines, and it's a, this is a little robot dude that we're working on, and. Uh, yeah, it's just it's a lot of work like it's probably the craziest largest scale project i've ever done like on my own you know mm -hmm. and uh it's exciting and also terrifying because of that <laughs> so it's, wow yeah it's gonna be fun lots of characters and crazy stuff going on and uh should be interesting so uh, a little a little robot like that how long it takes you to create and, and animate i guess well this is it's a process right so you have a, a friend of mine designed the, the character so he illustrated it and uh that took probably a couple of days just to kind of find a design that we liked. And um, then I handed over to my friend Brad to model it because he's a great uh, asset modeler guy. And uh, that took him probably in free time, probably took him like two months or so, just in like evenings and weekends and stuff, because we all have day jobs and we just do this project uh, for, for fun. And uh, then animation, you know, it depends on, on the shop, but, you know, uh, when I was working in film, uh, it would be like you could do three seconds of animation, four seconds of animation in like a week. Uh, I go a little bit faster in my free time because I'm not as picky about all the tiny little details. Um, and uh, also, I just don't have time to, to spend on that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, so it, it's it's a process and it does, you know, there's lots of work that goes into these things. And yeah, it's fun. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like the colors. Uh, that's very cool and yeah, thanks. Yeah. and i like their face and the robot and all those details. i think that's very yeah i it has to be very it connects at some level with uh, with with people the audience i guess when you have those face and emotions and feels like it, it has to connect with the, the audience right totally yeah and i feel like um uh so much science fiction stuff is like really kind of dark and depressing i like to make a future that's like hey things are going well this future's great <laughs> I like that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> cool. All right. And and then you just for uh, animate any of these robots, you normally use Maya, Unity, or uh, how that works for you? Yeah, work? yeah. So today we're we're uh, talking just about the, the second part of my process, which I animate in Maya, do like a normal production would. Most people animate in Maya or Blender or something, and then I export that as a FBX and bring that into Unity, where I do all my editing, uh, lighting, and rendering all out of there. And uh, I'll show you guys why I think that is uh, a positive and cool workflow. 
Uh, curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Well, let's let's just get it started. So first of all, let's let's share some. Uh, there's just a question right now. So yeah, some housekeeping stuff for the webinar. Please use the Q&A feature in the Zoom uh, to make any comment or questions that you want to know during the, the webinar. And responding to that last question about the, where is the sessions going to be recorded while well, they're leaving our YouTube and, and we will forward it later through the, for the ones who attended, right? So um, that's just wonderful. Um, there's, I think there's the next slide. Yeah, remember for the guys, uh, we have a, our back to school promotions, so please uh, go to our website and, and the Canada Walk Store, and you will find some uh, of the benefits that we are having for the back to school uh, promotions uh, right there. So thank you for for that. And lastly, but not uh, least, is your Wacom community. Give us a like on the Wacom uh, Canada. Uh, Instagram, so we will really appreciate that. Wacom underscore Canada is our official account, so please follow us. All this content and webinars it will be featured there, uh, same as uh, we will tag Nathan. So, so thank you so much, guys. And last, we're going to have next webinar with Rafael uh, Goldchain, Portrait and Beauty Retouching with uh, Wacom Intos Pro. So that's on September 29th, so please uh, come uh, at noon, so you will enjoy a little bit of photography editing there with Raphael. So it's very good, and obviously sponsored by this tech. And without further more, more or less right here with Nathan. So it's all yours. All right, everyone, thank you so much for coming. I'm going to share my screen and dive in. So there was a question. I lost the chat. Where did it go? Uh, can we have a recap of part one? Yes, Miguel. I'll give you a quick recap of what we have talked about last week. So um, let me just get into this. All right. So if you guys weren't in the last one, my name is Nate. I've been an animator for, I don't know, 15 years now. Uh, that's why I have a lot of gray hair in my beard uh, on the side. And I worked on a lot of fun projects that uh, as a kid, I always, you know, couldn't imagine ever dreaming of working on some of this stuff. So I feel very fortunate to have worked with amazing people on amazing projects and uh, i'm gonna last week i talked about my favorite thing which is animating giant creatures and robots and stuff so like you know you can kind of see up here there's a bit of godzilla uh on battle of superman i had a lot of fun animating doomsday the big burly bad guy uh bumblebee had some giant robots in it which was fun and even monster trucks this movie that no one saw uh, it has some really fun creatures and stuff in it, which was uh, a challenge, and uh, uh, but still a lot of fun. And so we kind of just discussed last week about like how to get convincing weight, how to get convincing character performances, and it all boils down to a lot of reference. Uh, so if you missed that session, check it out. It's on YouTube uh, on the Wacom channel, and there's a bunch of other great webinars from other awesome artists. So please check that out and. Uh, Love to hear what we think. Um, so, yeah, this is just what I'm talking about. I, I should have read this slide instead of the last slide. Sorry about that. <laughs> Here's a still from uh, this short film that I made. This is just kind of an early render test uh, of um, kind of getting the materials to look cool and the state to look cool with global illumination and ray tracing and all that kind of stuff, which we'll dive into today. Um, this is this asset is I believe it's a Starcraft Marine that I just bought off an asset store for animators, uh, and uh, I just wanted to scale them up and make them really big because not because I like Marines in Starcraft, but so much that I just like I just wanted to animate a big robot, and uh, <laughs> that's all it was. Um, and here is a I'm just going to share my video settings and share my sound. Come on, Zoom. Uh, I'll sound. Okay, cool. uh, I'm going to uh, talk about how we made this clip, and I'm just going to show it again, even though I showed it last week. Uh, 
All right. So I had some of my favorite stuff, which is big robots, uh, cute dinosaurs, and <laughs> my son, who's, who's four years old, uh, we make these little cartoons. Uh, and he's the voice of the dinosaur. You can see more on my YouTube channel, Little Mountain Animation. Uh, yeah. Anyways. What he said after seeing the, the video, your son. You know, I don't think he really, I don't think he really connects the dots that his yeah. dad makes this stuff. He's just kind of like, oh, that's kind of funny. Weird. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he's a fun kid. He, he gets a kick out of doing the voice. So it's, it's great to see. I, I just like, like, like start a very serious a video and then it starts then with the, at the end with the <laughs> dino. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun to, to pull the rug out of people's under the feet a little bit. Um, and the question I get from a lot of people when I when I post my uh, Unity real time animations, like that previous clip was all rendered in Unity, which is a software that's typically done reserved for video games, uh, but I like to use it for filmmaking and making short films. Uh, and the question I get a lot of time is why? Why don't I just do Blender or why don't I use other tools? And the reason why I love working in Unity in real time uh, is you can like prototype faster like ideas that I can quickly block together in an environment. I can quickly mess around with lighting. Uh, and um, as you get that instant feedback, whereas traditionally it takes a while to render images in Maya or other programs. There's there's you know real time things coming in those programs. Uh, but I just have other workflow tips that I really love to see in real time in, in Unity. And I can show you guys in detail um, why I choose it. Uh, it gives you uh, creative flexibility. And this is my biggest thing is the reason why I love working in real time is like, I don't often anticipate how things are going to look. Like if a light is shining over here, I don't really know what that's going to look like. I have a rough idea, but when I can start moving it around in real time and getting that instant feedback, uh, it gives me this creative kind of happy accident sense of playfulness that I don't really get in other workflows. So I'm often, you know, just having fun and just kind of dabbling um, and uh, figuring out what could work the best for the shot without really planning. And I just find it really um, responsive and, and fun. Uh, so this is a kind of boring slide, but it just shows like the traditional uh, workflow is like you have your storyboarding, which goes to editing, and then you have your previous layout stage, and then it goes back to editing, and then you go to animation, and then kick out a play blast and that goes back to editing and so on and so forth but it kind of is like this slow iterative loop where it, editing is constantly being fed new images um but what i love about uh real-time animation is you have your edit at the same time in the editor in, in the engine uh with with lighting with animation with effects and it's all happening within the confines of the edit you don't have to have that iteration loop uh, so much if it's all being updated in the same sequence at the same time uh, by different artists, if that makes sense. I put animation up here, and that's because you know animation is still done externally in Maya or Blender or whatever you want to use 3D Studio Max. Uh, but it still is really nice to see how much you can tweak things uh, within the engine. Nathan, those workflow is for any process, like for a movie or a commercial or any other workflow, or is different. Yeah, it doesn't. It, this is more like linear type of a film. So if it's a commercial, or if it's a uh, cinematic trailer for a video game, or if it's a you know movie or short film, whatever it is, it's the same workflow, which is really cool. Uh, okay, so I made this quick little video, and I'm going to share my optimizer video again. About it's only like. I don't know, 60 seconds of why I use it. And uh, it hopefully will give you a bit better, faster idea of, of what I'm talking about. And play. I'm using Unity to make Big Dinosaur, which is an animated series for YouTube. Unity is typically used for video games, but I'm using it right now for a linear storytelling experience. You can see here on the top left, that's our timeline. And the bottom left, that is our final image. The right viewport there, that is our sequence that we can change anything. You don't have to wait to render any type of lighting or camera changes or edit changes. 
all that stuff is just live and it happens instantaneously. So here I am playing with the light that's way too bright. It gives you the idea of the flexibility that you can have by working in this real-time engine, which is really fun creatively because it allows for happy accidents. Like say for example, I really like that light there, but I wasn't anticipating it to look that good. That is something that we can explore with real-time engines in a quicker, more productive way. Also, we can edit things a lot quicker. Like we say we really like this sequence. It's playing in real time live, but I want to change that camera. It's just, it's just too tight on the dinosaur's head. Let's just pull back a little bit and see what we can do. And quickly say, hey, look, let's find a composition. Does that look good for us? Are we happy with that? Nope, not wide enough. Let's pull it back even more. Oh, great. This is a good composition, but it's out of focus. Let's just quickly change that focus. And now, hey, directors, let's see the potential that we have to change the storytelling just like that. Um, that's just a really quick overview of why I like to choose uh, real-time engines like you. All right. So that was just a fun little video I made because I got a lot of questions uh, online from folks like, why are you doing this? And I thought I would answer in a quick little format uh, to, you know, why I work this way. Oops, sorry. Um, Speaking more to creative flexibility, uh, the you know you can use different uh, mobile devices to capture camera movement with the virtual cameras, and I feel like this is a really fun way to add you know um, that human touch to our our performances on our, on our camera because the camera is a character. You have to think about the camera; it has a certain person behind it. It's got a directorial kind of purpose, and it allows it to tell a story. And if you can get that like human motion in the cameras, just a little bit of kind of natural feeling kind of motion kind of moving around. It does help elevate your sequence and make it feel more believable. Um, my workflow is really simple. You know, I use the same type of rigs that I would use uh, in, in normal productions. Uh, and using Unity, it works with all your same favorite tools, if it's Maya Blender or, or whatever. There are some caveats though to the rigs. You have to build a rig specifically kind of for a game engine, meaning you have to keep your rig to be joint based and blend shape based, no fancy deformers, unfortunately. Um, and it's so, you know, if you're used to animating in Maya, you're gonna be able to port your stuff over easily into Unity. Um, this is just a little loop that I made about the future of where things are going, I feel like, and that is to be animating in engine. So if you really like animating uh, outside of Maya, it's another new thing to be able to see uh, in full real time, in a full environment, uh, your actual character moving around with lighting and effects and all that kind of stuff on top of it. And this is just a quick little demo of uh, me animating in Unity. Uh, a very basic little walk cycle for my dinosaur character. And, so Nathan, uh, when you say future, I think it sounds very interesting what you're saying. Like you say, like the future will be like other people, animation productions will be uh, animating this new way or using this software or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I believe that uh, the sooner we can get to be working in a final kind of render. So if I'm, and like my, the anecdote I often give is like, you know, you're working on a film and you don't have effects or lighting or any of that kind of stuff in there. Uh, your supervisor will say, hey, look, that guy that's way in the background of this crowd, his foot looks weird. Can you fix that? And then I'll spend all this time fixing that foot and it looks great. And then you see the final rendered image and it's got dust blowing around and effects and everything. And you don't even see the crowd, yet alone the one guy with the foot that I was fixing. So if you're able to animate in that scene with those lighting and effects and all those things already done and active, then you're not gonna worry and waste time on the details that you don't see, like that guy's foot that is missing. So I feel like it is a time-saving uh, uh, type of procedure. And it's also, you know, makes artists happy because they don't have to worry about details that aren't really gonna come through anyways. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it's, I think it is the future and uh, hopefully you all feel the same way. Um, so let's put all this stuff into practice. Let's actually make something. Um, I, I caveated this because I'm an animator. Uh, I just kind of dabble in environment art, lighting, rendering, everything else except animation. So <laughs> that is just for me to say, uh, if I screw up on lighting or environment arts, please bear with me. <laughs> all right. so. We will, don't worry. Right, we can wait. You. This is the favorite part, probably. I want to see you doing real animation. 
Yeah, so this is it. So I've already animated the scene. It's it's uh, part of um, the short film. And this is in Maya now. And uh, how I actually approach this sort of stuff is I bring in an image plane here. This is my basement. And you can see me like being an angry and grumpy guy here, <laughs> which is embarrassing, but hey, it's there. And what I do is I leave that image plane up with the reference that I filmed. And I, I mimic my motion that I film that reference uh, to kind of on the 3D asset that we're animating here. Um, so this guy is a big heavy robot. He moves really slow. And this animation, it doesn't look great. It's actually kind of rough um, and slow, but I knew the camera angles that I wanted to use in Unity because I can just export this and start throwing it in there and throwing the cameras. So I know how much it's gonna, like how much I have to show in order for it to work within Unity. Uh, and that can help you save some time too. Uh, and so then like what I did after that is, you know, I had him turn. This is just kind of <clears throat> the first half of the scene. So I would just animate him turning. And I'm just going to quickly say this, like no, no good animation is ever done on a webinar because there's just not enough time. As you guys know, animation is a tedious and boring task to watch, <laughs> but I'll do my best to keep it fun and make him have a more heroic pose here because his pose is not great. And get this bull vector, where is it hiding? Is that his leg? Where is that bull vector? Is it this one? I'll turn off my geometry. Let's see that one. Okay, anyways. Uh, so once I have him happy with this pose, see that timing feels really slow. I'm not happy with that. In the actual short film, he turns a lot faster. So what I can do is like delay it a little bit. And then, and also it's fun to have the arms do a bit of an antic. And if you film your own reference, this is like the stuff that it's really important to kind of keep an eye on and notice, just take notes. Like what is my body doing during this time? How am I actually moving? And how can I bring that over onto this character? So it's coming, it's coming. But I won't spend too much time on the actual animation because there's some like fun visual bits that are less tedious and less boring. Um, and this animation doesn't look great, I'll be honest. All right, so let's say we're happy with that. What you do is you go file, export selection, and you want to choose an FBX and hit export selection. And you want to make sure that, uh, where are my presets? You have all this stuff here with animation. You want to make sure you have animation in it. You want to make sure you have a decent frame rate. So we get our shot ends at frame 500. And then you will have your exported animation. So I've already exported it. And I'm going to bring it into Unity. So this is uh, almost default scene in Unity 20. What are we in? 2021. And there's like this new like fun volumetric clouds. So these are like real real clouds they're not like an hdri or anything like that it's it's uh, volumetric clouds which actually cast i wonder if you can see it they cast shadows you can kind of see a little soft shadow on the cloud there it's kind of fun so the first thing we're going to do is actually before we get into anything i always forget this step there's this new uh lens flare thing and if you know me and you know movies it's really fun to play around with lens flares. So let's see, you guys tell me in the chat, which lens flare do you like? Uh, so there's, this one is pretty, this is kind of generic, but it starts to get more like sci-fi-y, like that streak, you know, in the Star Trek movies that JJ Abrams always has those long anamorphic lens flares. Yeah. Uh, that's fun. And I love to get some of that kind of stuff in there. Like Just a mor like, morning rise, rise there, right there. Yeah, so you can see like, Oh, there's an eclipse kind of effect going on there with that sphere that I put in there. Uh, but uh, let's see, I like this sci-fi looking one because it's it's very streaky and J.J. Abrams will be proud. 
Um, and you can even go in there and like change the colors of them. So let's do that quickly. I want the lines to be kind of bluish because that always feels really sci-fi. And yeah, guys, if you have questions, just let us know. I mean, in the chat, feel free. Just drop those here and we will read them or any yeah, questions. Of course. <laughs> And if this, if you're bored and you hate this, just let me know. We'll just, we'll see. <laughs> hey, to me, it looks good. I'm just learning as much as, as probably you by yeah. teaching this. It's wonderful. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. So let's say we're happy because it's got some kind of blue and orange. If you guys watch Michael Bay movies or uh, anything, it's always blue and orange. And I want to kind of create that look. Um, with this project, so. So there's a question there for Miguel G no. Gomez. They said, how long do the renders take in Unity? Well, it depends. You can optimize things and get them to happen instantaneously. So you just hit play and it renders out a file and it's awesome. Uh, but for my stuff, I like to, I don't like to optimize because I'm lazy and uh, I don't have time to kind of um, dedicate to that. So I like to also maximize everything, like render it in 4K put motion blur, like subframe motion blur on it. So it's more cinematic. And then it'll take me like, you know, five minutes to render out the minute long clip or whatever. So it's, it's still pretty fast. It's a lot faster than what I'm used to in working in film where, you know, you have a whole render farm, which renders frames overnight. And those frames can take anywhere from, you know, 12 hours to whatever. So it's just like, uh, you know, so it's a lot faster. I'll say that. And it does come at a cost. I mean, like we're working in real time, so we're not really, we're limited to some of the, you know, full features that you get in, in a film. I'm not comparing them one-to-one uh, -one at all, but uh, there's some benefits to working this way. Um, so uh, we imported our, our robot guy standing up. So here he is kind of doing a slow motion stand-up thing. Whoa, because he's a big, heavy robot. You gotta move slow. So we brought him in. Oops, we don't need to. So Nathan, there's another question from Manuel Sombrano. So have you tried to do the same in Unreal Engine? Yeah, I have. Kind of yeah, Unreal is super cool. Um, the, what they, some of the stuff they do is, is awesome. I just really gravitated towards Unity because everything I do is just pretty much, it's mostly just me in terms of my development, like on these short films. I get favors from friends to model some things and stuff. Uh, but in terms of actual, production, it's, it's mostly just uh, me. So I find that Unity is, is great for smaller teams and, and for more indie type of, of developers like me. Um, but not to say that, you know, uh, Unreal is not powerful, it's great. You can do a lot with it. Um, I just gravitated towards, towards Unity. So yeah, yeah it's, it's whatever tool you like to use that gets you results that you're happy with. Um, yeah, I feel like just go for it. All right, so let's get this marine in here. So right now you notice it looks kind of small. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is bring in some Kitbash. So there's this company called Kitbash. They make assets um, oops, for whatever type of production you're looking for. What am I, what am I doing here? Assets, Kitbash, Neo Shanghai. So I bought these guys and it's a lot of fun. You can see here in the preview, okay, here's a building. Let's bring that building into our scene. Uh, and you'll notice that, hey, where did our dude go? He got squished because this building is massive. So what we gotta do is scale up our robot to be similar in size. Because there's nothing like a giant robot. All right, so that looks pretty good. Roughly, maybe he's too big. Let's see here. All right, now you can tell here that he's not animating. He's just kind of sitting in his squat little pose. So the next thing we gotta do is we have to make a timeline. So let's create a the empty game object. I'm gonna call it timeline. And I'm going to create a director component line. So I have this timeline sequencer thing here. So I'm going to create that. And it's asking me where I want to put it. So let's put it in here and call it that. Great. So, so now, Nathan, a quick question. So when you're doing all these processes, at what time or what time of the this process you start 
thinking about lighting and 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 and, and, and the objects that you're placing in the, in the in the screen. Yeah, I'm not gonna think too much about lighting yet. I'm just gonna get like all my pieces in my little. Uh, Got it. Kind of feeling good, and then I'm gonna start playing with lighting and and cameras and stuff. So let's quickly throw our marine. Oops, we have to lock our timeline. Throw our marine on the timeline and add an animation track. And still, if I scrub it, he's not animating. So I have to go back and find my FBX. So this is the FBX we exported from Maya. And if you open that up, you'll see, oh, hey, look, there is an animation clip in there. And you put that on the timeline. And now, ta-da, he's moving. Cool. So he feels good in scale towards this uh, building. If you're not happy with his materials, you know, he's too shiny, you can always select the material and just start remapping some of these values. Again, I'm not a modeler, rigger, asset person. So, you know, sure, maybe that looks good to you. Maybe it doesn't, I could spend more time <laughs> developing that kind of stuff. And I like to put this sphere here, this reflective sphere, just so I know what the light is doing. And you'll see why in a little bit here, uh, why that's really important to me. Um, so let's just add a bunch more buildings. So let's just go in here and I'm just gonna grab a whole bunch of these buildings and quickly block in our city. Now, the one thing that I love about these Kitbash um, assets, you know, they're great, but they're also very um, dense with polygons, like they're very heavy. So if you put a bunch of them in there, your scene may slow down a little bit. That's okay. And Nathan, this is all uh, on this in the system, all these uh, assets that you're just placing in the buildings or uh, you create those? I didn't create this, I just bought them. You can, you can, uh, license, you can license all these materials and Often artists do and video game artists do, especially indie people like me who are very small uh, in terms of their team size. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. All right. So I'm going to, once I'm happy with all those, I'm just going to quickly take them all. And you can spend a lot of time de like decorating your city, building your city. I'm just going to duplicate them for the sake of time today and quickly. You can rotate them around a little bit. There's going to be some collisions and stuff, but that's okay for now. So I encourage you, if you're doing this, to look at real cities and see how their buildings are kind of laid out. Um, but because we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants here today, I'm going to quickly just duplicate all this stuff, rotate it to avoid the duplicate, like the obvious redundancies in the building. So like right now I see these two are really close. So I'm gonna move one of them. Yeah, that's not it. This one. So that just doesn't feel like, you can even just rotate the side of it. So it feels like it could be a different building. Um, awesome. Now I'm gonna choose my camera and try and find a camera angle that I feel like is cool. And this camera angle could work. Just gonna get rid of that sphere by hiding it. And great. Let's say that this is starting to look like the scale. Cause you know how I talked about in the last session, uh, when you're animating a big creature it's a, or a big robot, it's important that you provide some kind of scale so the audience can realize Oh, this is a really big dude. So if you're, I, I like the example from Godzilla <clears throat> where the director Gareth Edwards, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he kind of always puts like the camera on the ground. So I like to like think about stuff like that when I am animating these big creatures. So if I put the camera on the roof of this building, you know, all of a sudden there are some contextual little elements that start to make this scene feel like, oh, I see, I understand how big this guy is. Cause I, I know how big like a door is and I know how big like an antenna is, but when I see this big dude next to that, uh, it's starting to really feel like it makes sense. And yeah, that's cool. All right, so I'm starting to feel pretty good with that. The next thing I'm going to do is add some motion on my camera. So we are going to 
Do I not have Cinema Machine in this? Oh, yeah. So this thing called Cinema Machine, which is a plugin for Unity, which allows you to do all essentially the editing magic. And this is really, to me, the backbone of my entire project. So I'm just gonna take my camera here and I'm gonna plug it into the Cinema Machine thing. And then I'm gonna make a shot. So it kind of gets made wherever your viewport is, the camera does. So I'm going to say that I want this to be my angle and add the missing shot and create the camera. So it's slightly off from where we were. And let's just move it back to kind of where we were thinking. Back in here somewhere. And if you ever use like Premiere or any editing program, this is kind of the same idea. So we have one camera here while we scrub and then we can make a new camera. Add some machine shots. And let's put it down on the ground so we can see this guy from, from the ground. Somewhere in here is cool. Look at like I like how the sun's peeking through. That's kind of cool. Let's pretend that we're happy with that. Oh, look, we got a little street light here. This is what I mean by like working in real time. Like I wasn't anticipating the street light being here, but it adds scale to the environment. So I'm gonna create this to be our next shot. And so now we have this shot where he's kind of poking up over the buildings and it cuts to the next shot where he's doing this whole thing, standing up. Great. That's massive. He's massive. He's a uh, big, big fella. Uh, he is indeed. <laughs> and then that, if you look back at the short, I had this camera kind of orbiting around like it's from a helicopter or something like that. I'm going to quickly recreate that here. So I'm going to make an empty game object. And I'm going to really put it going like Michael Bay productions. <laughs> you got it. You got to go big. You got to go Michael Bay. <laughs> and I'm going to put the camera underneath that. So essentially what we're saying is this game object is now the parent of this camera. So if I rotate this game object, hey, the camera comes along with it. So we're starting to get that Michael Bay shot from bad boys, you know, where they're like standing uh -huh. up and being badass. I love that stuff. It's so much fun. So let, let's recreate it here. Uh, I'm going to add a animation track to this guy. And I'm going to start rotating it. So there's this little like red button, which if you've used Maya or anything else, it's kind of like the auto key button. And that's essentially what we're doing here. So I'm just going to start off, like maybe it's poking behind this building. So let's start there. And as we go to here, the end of the shot, we're going to end our shot somewhere around, somewhere around here maybe. So he's still in frame. So it's coming. It's not, the animation doesn't really hold up great from this angle, but that's okay. We're just having fun. Um, and I'm going to, this is the curve editor. So you can see here, like you animate in Maya or anything else, is that this camera also has a curve. So I'm just gonna make that linear by right clicking and going both tangents, linear. Boom. All right, so now it's the camera's moving at a steady speed. And I will do the same thing, but for this second camera, I'm gonna do something different. I'm going to animating it, and I'm animated following along with this guy. Um, and so now you're wondering, okay, we have these cameras. So I'm just going to key the position and rotation. Um, but the lighting is not looking great. And that's okay. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. So I'm just going to use my camera, rotate it around by hand. And just kind of track this dude standing up which that camera motion felt a little bit fast to me, but let's see if we can fix it in the animation editor. So I'm just going to move this dude over a little bit, see how that feels. All right. So ideally, I think this animation on the robot should be slower and the camera can notify you, can inform you about how the scale is feeling. So what I'm gonna do is take this animation clip here and I'm going to cut it in half by hitting S on my keyboard and I'm going to slow it down. 
by like 0. 0.8. And now, all of a sudden, let's see, does that work? Did that break things? Hey, Nathan, there's a question from Yael Gamis. So how long do, do the render take in Unity? Oh, yeah. Uh, it takes like as long as you kind of, like, ideally, you can do it instantly. Like if I hit record right now, there's no render time. It's just going to play. But you can start messing around and make things more complicated and higher res and have subframe, motion blur, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so it can take a little bit longer. It all, it's all up to how how well you optimize things. Hey, no problem. <laughs> um, cool. So things are starting to feel like an actual scene now. It's looking good. Um, I'm just going to do a few more things here before we move along. And that's just going to add a little bit of camera noise because like I said before, I, I use the virtual camera for the actual short, which copies motion from a mobile device, but you can use the noise thing on here as well, which is just this little noise thing, basic multi-channel. And they have these profile presets. So I can just do like, uh, let's do handheld, telelens, mild, let's see how that feels. So it's probably it's pretty subtle. I don't know how much of it is coming through in the, the zoom compression and frame rates and stuff, but essentially what I want is I don't want my cameras to ever feel perfectly still. I like a little bit of this kind of motion on the camera. And I'll do the same thing on this one. I'll make it crazy so you can actually you can actually tell. Uh, let's make it like handheld strong. I don't know if that's reading either, but you can kind of see it feels like someone's filming it with their phone or something. Um, cool. And what else was I going to do here? Oh, yeah. I wanted to, prior to our, our discussion earlier, is I wanted to add a couple of smaller elements in here just so that it feels like um, this is like a really big guy. So let's add like a sign. Let's see, is that gonna show up? No, nope, we're too too high. Let's see here, what else do we have? Do you have any favorite effect from uh, the software that you're seeing right now, uh, Nathan? Yeah, yeah, I got like, I love, I love the ray tracing and global illumination. And when you start adding that stuff in there, it really starts to come alive and starts to feel like uh, it's a real, city you know and so mm -hmm. let's add this bus stop here so that it feels like we're poking out behind something you know what's this a crane that probably won't really fit <laughs> uh but let's just add it in here for context while we move quickly so now it looks <laughs> like there's some scale in terms of the elements that we have around our dude wow right. yeah so it starts to feel cool now let's start thinking about all of our fun effects. And if you go into your project settings, there are these quality levels. Right now we are on medium quality. I'm going to add, I'm going to, I've already set this up for time, but I can kind of break down what goes into the high quality settings. So I, I switched it over. There we go, it's starting to come to life now. And it takes a minute to bake some of these shaders. I'm seeing some texture issues on my guy. Let's go out there. Um, and our volumetric clouds are looking a bit strange, but I can debug that later. Uh, yeah, well, that's one of my textures. Anyways, I don't know what happened to my robot. Broke his textures. Oh yeah, that looks really bad. Well. This is where I said we embrace the chaos and we don't often know what exactly is going to happen. But as you can see, this texture is broke. Uh, and this did work yesterday when I set it up. So <laughs> sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So what I like about this shot here is in the short film, whew, that's rough. Okay. Uh, is I backlit it all really dramatically. So I grabbed the sun. And you can tell now that things are getting slower on my PC because I have all these crazy buildings and I have real time ray tracing and real time global illumination and none of my lights are baked or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and I turned off this reflection sphere. But let's look at it. Let's see if we can see reflection. So now do you see in here 
how we can see the robot reflecting, we can see the buildings reflecting. Uh, so what real-time ray tracing is, is um, you get that real-time reflections. And not only that, but it just kind of accurately tells you the camera what the light, like light rays are doing. So they're bouncing off things and all that kind of stuff. How light actually kind of behaves is what they're trying to emulate with ray tracing. I'm sure I'm doing a terrible job actually explaining the science behind it, but um, that's the rough idea. I'm just going to delete some of these buildings because my computer is getting too slow. And this is the kind of thing that I would do um, after, you know, once the, the camera is all kind of done, I would set it all up so that it would, I would add buildings in there and stuff. Uh, but I wanted to backlight this dude. So let's see here. Let's get the sun right behind him. You'll notice. So, yeah, sorry. It's, a, it's a, silly, a silly question. So when you delete those, those buildings, it's like you save them or it's already gone. So you have to replace those again. Like, and, and Yeah, yeah, we had like, cause we added so many of them and the computer is calculating how much like bounce lights are coming off of it and all this sort of stuff. It can be a little bit uh, of a process. So, wow. yeah. So let's see here. I kind of like, like in the short film, I had the, the light right behind him and it looked kind of cool. So I'm just trying to emulate that. I also want to get that lens flare, the JJ Abrams lens flare type thing going. So let's see here. Let's see if we can get it again. I have to go a little bit higher. There's a question here while I do this. Uh, because the camera shots are designed in Unity, that means that the animation you make in Maya could be readable at, at any angle, right? Or do you already have the camera angles in mind before jumping into Unity? Thanks. Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you, Victor. That is something that I often wrestle with is getting the cameras from Unity back into Maya uh, and vice versa. And it is something that I think there are solutions for, but they're not always easy. And so because I'm doing the short film in my free time, I often like to go with what is the fastest, easiest workflow? So I often just wing it. I just kind of say, well, this is kind of the shot that I want. I kind of want it to be down on the ground pointing up. Uh, so I just kind of eyeball it. And then I just keep my, my workflow kind of goes back a little bit. So I have to tweak something in mind. I can tweak it quickly. Um, and I'm just going to turn my quality out of medium quality so I can quickly get this light to be where I want it. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. It's not the perfect workflow for cameras yet. And I think that is coming though. I, I sincerely hope we have a good solution for it. You kind of need to animate to camera for this type of work. Let's see here. Okay, so this light is, I think it's a little bit intense. Let's turn it down a little bit. Let's see, volumetrics, turn down this light a little bit. Nope, too much. And sure, let's just say that this is good. I also like to like have a lot of buildings and stuff in these scenes because they cast interesting shadows and like the light will play through it really interesting. So wherever you can, make sure you can have cool light bouncing off stuff. And now I will go back into my preferences. Oops, not that one, settings and make it high quality again and start to kind of get a feel for what this guy is going to look like. Um, and you can go in here and play with all like the render settings some more. You can make the global illumination much more intense or less intense. Um, it's totally up to you what your what your computer is capable of and what your um, vision is for the for the deliverable story. Um, so this is a really quick workflow and I wish I had a better looking textures. Ah, it drives me wild, what happened? Uh, but that's where we're at for right now. We've got about 12 minutes left. Does anyone have any questions, things that they, you know, kind of want to see? There's one from Grace. I don't know if you can see it. Say, hi, just a quick question about your workflow for the camera. Do you ever import cameras in from Maya in your filmmaking process? I find I'm, very dependent on my camera when I'm animating and figure I will get the best results from importing in Maya cameras. But do you find it the more e efficient, better to do cameras and an and engine? Yeah, great question. So I, I often, if I need the camera, 
um, there are workarounds. So you can export an FBX as a camera and then you get that data in Unity. Um, and then I will often constrain my Unity camera to that Maya FBX camera, if that makes sense. But yeah, animate, you need a you need a camera, right? Like as animators, we often animate to camera, and that's really important. Um, I feel like these days though, I just don't really spend the time to do it just because uh, I can just quickly go back to my fix things and, and bring it back into Unity within like seconds. So uh, I just feel like it's more fun to be free in Unity and find the best camera for your story than it is to be tied to a Maya camera, if that makes sense. But if you really want to do that, you totally can do it. Uh, I just like to, you know, have that creative flexibility of, of moving things wherever I want. Because I mean, now that we have this uh, and we say we don't like the position, it's really easy just to go in there and, you know, like anything else, move the camera around. I think it's a bit too high. Let's move it down a little bit or whatever. And to me, that flexibility of repurposing things and making your animation, um, making your storytelling more the uh, priority than you know being kind of tied to any specific camera is, I don't know, to me, it's fun and interesting, but for sure, you want to be able to have that representation of the Maya camera. And it is something that I've, um, um, talk to the Unity folks about, and uh, I'm sure there's a, a solid workflow coming. <laughs> uh, the thing is like, you know, when you're working in a software that's made for games, not everyone wants to work in certain ways. So they, you know, it's, it's a little bit tricky, but it's coming. Hopefully that answers your question, Grace. Thank you. Yeah. It's awesome, awesome question. Yeah, thank you guys for your questions. And keep coming, your, uh, sending your questions along. So we'll respond. Uh -huh. Yeah, she says actually right. That totally makes sense. Thank you so much, uh, Nathan. So that's wonderful. Oh, thank you. I mean, we had the last uh, ten minutes, uh, Nathan. I don't know if you want to keep going doing that this animation with the robot. Keep uh, telling us sure more details. Yeah. Sure. Um, let's see what else we got here. I'm just trying to see what's going on with my textures, but I'm very sorry that it's kind of looking weird. Um, I can open up. The other project, maybe I'll just stop sharing for one second and load up the final of the other one just so you can see what it's like. Yeah, that sounds great. In the meanwhile, we can just, or if anyone, anyone wants to just let us know if you have any questions uh, before we wrap up this webinar. I mean, it will be wonderful. And if not, remember the webinar will be on our YouTube channel and also as well on Nathan uh, uh, community. So you can post it there. So for cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just feel like if you guys are if you're animators or, or, you know, storytellers, I just think that these tools that they have now for telling your story, uh, they're so powerful. And I just really hope that more folks can hop on there. Like, even if you're just doing animation for your school assignment or whatever, I think just take it into one of these engines and, and put some lights on it and make it look cool. It looks way better than a, like a default gray Maya play blast, you know? So to me, I think it's really um, beneficial to learn these new tools and kind of learn where the industry is going. That's one very great information, Nathan. I really like uh, all the inspiring uh, stuff and, and, and visuals that you just share right now in this webinar is just good. Any final words, any inspirational quotes or any favorite books that you want to share with everybody <laughs> uh, as a reference? That will be wonderful too. Sure, yeah. Um, oh, this is finishing loading now. Uh, so inspirational words. I mean, here's the thing I will say, and this is not at all related to anything that we have um talked about today but it's just like i think inspirational words are take care of yourselves we all like to work ourselves into oblivion uh as as artists and um not in this project either everything i've worked on today is destroyed <laughs> no so, don't say that <laughs> i don't know what happened to my dropbox um um but yeah anyways what i was going to say is inspirational as artists we like to have these side projects and these things that are passionate or passionate about. 
Um, but I also want you guys to make sure that you feel like you're taking care of yourself, not working, sitting at a desk for you know, 20 hours a day. <laughs> Go outside, enjoy your friends and family. Uh, awesome. But also if this is fun for you and you like doing this kind of stuff, like, like me, um, then I encourage you just to, you know, hop in there, tell stories, make cool stuff. That's wonderful. Great. Thank you, uh, Nathan. It was really nice to see. How do you embrace chaos? Like just right now. <laughs> and then yeah, sorry, all about, and all about the Unity software uh, you're sharing. There's any um, um, maybe a reference in the future that uh, you want to share later, like uh, in your community, like at YouTube or anywhere? I mean, do you want to mention so they can find you there? Yeah, yeah sure. Let me bring it up. I'll share it on the um, site here one second. So I have a YouTube channel. It doesn't um, get too much traction, so I will share it here. But I, there's a lot of um, fun little tutorials and stuff here. It is just a uh, little mounted animation. Uh, you can see my dinosaur stuff here. Uh, you can also see I do some contests. I do stuff in VR. I also have a, a video about how I did the stuff that I just did right now um and you can see my breakdown i use the kit bash assets where you can buy them from um yeah i'm working on a new video now and this is my virtual camera stuff lots of fun little tips that if you're interested by all means check it out and um yeah yeah like uh, miguel gomez just said this has been great so i think everybody's super excited about this uh, webinar of Life Flash with you, Nathan. That's one of the animating big robots and this all these beautiful stuff that you share from the last uh, webinar. So it's just great. Thank you so much. Thank and you. yeah, just like I said, we want to post this on our YouTube channel and welcome. So as well, Nathan, and then give us a like if you like this content that we will bring more maybe animators like you nathan and don't forget we're participating in the uh, ottawa animation film festival that uh, starts on september 22nd and goes all the way to october 4th well awesome. welcome is a, a sponsor so i know you will probably know that festival very well nathan so yeah i'm um, going so i'll see you there digitally yeah exactly it's all virtual and come join us and we'll have a boot too so if you want to uh, get a special discount code just go on the website and and, and the animation festival and then we'll, you will find us there and then well any any last words and nathan uh no that's it if you the best way to reach me is on twitter at iso smrt it's an old simpsons reference from like a million years ago but uh reach out <laughs> if you have any questions or if you want to just connect and follow my crazy projects that'd be rad yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you so much as well for our welcome uh, Canada. Just give us a like there. And well, thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful to have you and and, and this set of webinars. Uh, Nathan, it's just wonderful thank to you. have a uh, great Canadian artist and, and sharing this great content and learn so much just by just seeing you working and your what is your passion there? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, this is fun. This is great. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been awesome to do this on behalf of Wacom and behalf of my little projects. So, yeah, it's been awesome. I think there's one last question just to sure. read. So, no, no, I think we're good. So, thank you, guys. If you have any details, please let us know. And don't forget, we got our next webinar on September 29 with Rafael Penn. It's about photo editing. So, it will be wonderful. My name is Patricio. And thank you so much and see you, Nathan. Thanks, everybody. Take it easy.